Right, so y'all, this is a problem that one of our classmates asked, and it's the one dealing with the box with a square base and an open top. So let's see what we have here. It says the volume's supposed to be 78,732. We wish to find the dimensions of the box and minimize the amount of material used. So the directions here say, first, let's find a formula for the surface area of the box uh, in terms only of X, the length of the one side of the square base. Okay, so first thing we're going to do we are gonna draw a picture. So here is my picture. This is what my box is gonna look like, something like this, okay? And that's a pretty good box. Okay, so we know the base is X by X, and we don't know the height, so we're gonna call it Y. So first off, the formula for the volume of a box is length times width times height. Come on, pen, there we go, okay. So the volume of my box is going to be the length times the width, which is x squared, right, times the height, which is y. Now, we also know that the volume of the box needs to be 78,732, which is telling me that x squared y needs to be equal to 78,732. So if I solve this equation for the letter y, I end up with 78,732 all over x squared. Okay, remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to find the, the uh, surface area of the box, okay? So on the next page, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw the same picture that I had before. So let me, let me do this, okay. So here is my square base, right? X and X. And here is what my box looks like. I know it's a little bit taller, but I think you guys get the idea. Boom, boom. There we go. And that was Y. So we said Y was equal to 78,732 uh, over X squared. Okay. If I'm going to find a formula for the surface area, remember, the base of this thing here was that right there. So x and x gives me an x squared. And then I have, say, this side right here. So the area of that square would be x times y. But we have 1, we have 2, we have 3, we have 4 of those. So that's a 4xy. So now my surface area would be equal to x squared plus 4x times y which we know is 78,732 over x squared. Okay. So let's see, first off, what's gonna happen? Uh, this x here will cancel with one of those, so I'm still gonna be left with an x on the bottom. And I need to take four times 78,732. So let me clear this out. So four times 78,732 is given me something like 314,928. So 314,928. Okay, so right over here, what I'm gonna do, that's the answer that I'm gonna write in my first box. So I'm gonna have x squared plus 314,928 all over x. Okay, so the second part says, now, let's find the derivative of that. Okay, so let's find the derivative of it. So if my surface area formula looks like this, x squared plus 314,928, I'm going to write it with an x to the negative 1. And so now, if I'm going to find the derivative of this, well, the derivative of x squared leaves me with a 2x. That negative 1 times this number gives me a negative 314,928. Uh, all over x to the power 2, because it would really be x to the negative 2, but I'm going to write it on the bottom. So this right here is going to be my derivative. So 2x minus 3, 14, 9, 28, all over x squared. Okay. So now the third part says calculate when the derivative is equal to 0. That is when a prime of x is equal to 0. So let's come back over here, okay? So step number three, we're gonna set this guy here equal to zero. 
okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and move that term over. That leaves me with a two x over one is equal to three, 14, nine, 28, all over x squared. And I'm gonna go ahead and cross multiply. So that's gonna give me a two x to the third equals, well, one times that is still that same number, three, 14, nine, 28. We'll divide them both by two. And let me grab my calculator again. It's right here. Let's divide that number by two. I'm coming up with 157,464. 157,464. And to solve for x, since it's being raised to the third power, we need to take the cubic root. So on my calculator, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take my answer I'm going to raise it to the power of one-third, right? Because that's my cube root. And I'm coming up with 54. Okay? So I'm coming up with x equals 54. So look, I'll scroll back over here to my original problem. And that occurs at 54. Now, the next part says we have to make sure that this value of x gives a minimum. So let's use the second derivative test. Okay, so we're now going to find the second derivative, so let me come back over here. Let's see, where are we? Here we go. This was my first derivative, right? So let me write that again. My first derivative was a 2x, a minus 314, 928. I'm gonna use this as x to the power of negative two. So that was my first derivative. So now when I take my second derivative, that's gonna give me a two. Uh, multiplying these, that's gonna give me a positive. Whatever 314,928 times two is. So 314,928, and we're gonna double it. 629,856. 629,856, all over x to the third, okay? Let me fix that because it looks a little messy. Here we go. X to the third. So 2 plus 629, 856 over X to the third. Oops. So let me come back over here. So this is going to be 2 plus 629. Oh, man, I already forgot my number. Uh, 856 all over X to the third. Okay. And now the last part says, can we evaluate that at the number that we got? Of course you can. So let's come back one more time over here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna plug in 54 into our problem right here. Okay, so let's do this on the calculator. So let's see. 629.56 divided by 54 raised to the third. Oops. Get rid of that parenthesis. Okay. Bring this down here. And then add 2 to it. So we get 6. So when we plug all that stuff in, we came up with 6. And then look, look what it says. Note, since our answer is positive, that means that the graph is concave up. And so that would indicate a minimum. Okay. And so that's basically what I was doing here in this problem, y'all. 